okay so so we are in discrete time Fourier transform okay so we are in Fourier analysis for discrete time signal okay and we have completed already discrete Fourier series and uh, then we move to discrete Fourier transform okay so here we in discrete series Fourier series we uh, uh, we uh, have focused on non -peri uh, periodic signal okay Fourier transform we are uh, in Fourier transform we are normally focusing in uh, non periodic signal so you have all so already you have the idea okay so we have learned the Fourier transform fair okay so this is the Fourier transform okay so if you have a discrete time signal xn you can convert it to omega domain or frequency domain okay using this summation okay so what you have to do that you have to multiply each sequence from uh, these exponential terms and you have to do that you you have to find the summation okay so you can find the Fourier transform of this xn okay so although also we have seen that once we uh, convert this xn this n is discrete time variable okay this n is discrete time variable you have already learned this okay this n is discrete time variable so this n this n is a discrete time variable this n this n is discrete time variable this is discrete time okay this is discrete time uh, once we convert this n into omega that means into frequency this omega is not a discrete signal it is a continuous variable it is a continuous variable not a discrete variable okay so if we want to convert this frequency domain signal again into time domain again into this frequency domain signal again into time domain you have to do the integration okay so you have to do this integration so that is inverse Fourier transform so you have already either you have you have we have found that okay also we have seen that the Fourier spectra okay so we have seen that this x omega is some kind of a complex number okay so in a polar form we can represent any complex number in this way this is the magnitude and this is the phase of the complex number so using this identity you can uh, uh, you can represent this x omega as a magnitude and a phase okay so if you plot omega this omega versus magnitude magnitude of the signal we called it magnitude the spectrum okay and if we plot this five this is phase this five is the phase okay if you if you plot this five with respect to omega we called it phase spectrum okay we have seen that okay and uh, i think i we have done a simple example okay so that kind of question will come to your exam exam also not complex uh, problems okay very complicated problem will not come to your exam okay so simple question like that okay uh, you will have so don't worry okay so if you wait a minute
Okay. Can you see my Windows? Sorry, Windows journal screen. Yes, sir. We can. Ah, okay, okay. So, uh, for example, if we are given this kind of very simple sequence, let's say that this is the zero one. Okay. So this is the zero one. If we put the arrow, this is the zero uh, sample. Okay. So if you can, if we give this kind of one, okay. So you should be able to find the x omega Fourier transform using the uh, yes, that identity, and also you should you should be able to find the magnitude, okay, and the phase, phase also, okay. So, so you should be able to do this kind of question, okay. So maybe, uh, maybe uh, uh, if three variable is not. Maybe a uh, three variable is also possible, like it. Okay, so let's say that this kind of one, two, two, okay. Now, I will give you an example. Okay, so I will give you an example that the simplification will be easy there. Okay, so you will not have the much simplification. Uh, let's say that this kind of one. So if I give you this kind of sequence, this is the zero sample, okay? So try to find the x omega, okay? And I'll try to find the magnitude of this x omega and try to find the phase of this <coughs> x omega. Phase is normally referred in phi, okay? This phase is also a, uh, phase is also a function of a omega, okay? So can you try to evaluate this thing? If so this is another example, maybe the example three, okay? So this kind of question will come to exam, okay? So I ask you to find the Fourier transform x omega, okay? So for that, you have to use this identity, okay? You have to use this identity, okay? So first, Use this identity and uh, find the Fourier transform. So it is very easy. Find the Fourier transform, okay? Right? Then uh, try to use the Euler formula, okay? Here you have to use the Euler formula. Try to use the Euler formula. Try to use the Euler formula. Okay, formula and try to find the magnitude and the phase of the of x omega. Okay, so if you can um, do this kind of question, you can do the exam question also. Okay, so please try to do this. I will give you uh, five minutes, maybe. Uh, 10 minutes, I will give you 10 minutes. Try to do this. Okay, I will do this. Okay, so I got one answer. Let's see that it is correct or not. Um, uh, okay, so so you are given a time domain sequence. Okay, and you need to convert it to frequency domain. Okay, so for that you have to use the Fourier transform. You already know that. Okay, so Fourier transform of x n. Okay, we can write as x omega. Okay, and you can write it as sigma n from respect mm. 
n from minus infinity to plus infinity n from minus infinity to plus infinity xn e to the power e to the power uh, <coughs> minus j omega n okay so you have to find this sum okay so this is very easy okay so this is the zero sample okay so if you draw this signal if you draw this signal simply it is like this okay this is xn and this is n so you have only zero and minus one and plus one sample okay so you have zero minus one and plus one sample okay so minus one is equal to two and plus one is equal to two zero sample is equal to one okay so this is the sequence okay so now you can expand this okay very easy okay so x now n from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, minus infinity to here it is zero plus one to plus infinity also zero okay so only we have minus n from minus one to plus one okay so you can write it as n from minus one to plus one x n t to the power j omega n okay so you can expand this okay so n from minus one okay so when the n is equal to minus one that is an x minus one e to the power minus j omega n is equal to minus one so minus one minus one this will be plus okay so it will be my plus j omega okay plus j omega plus x zero now we need zero okay so in x zero e to the power minus j omega n n is zero so e to the power j omega n also will be zero so it, it will be e to the power zero plus now n is equal to one so it will be x one e to the power minus omega n is one so one minus one it will be minus no so it will be minus j omega okay so you have this sequence okay so if you have find up to up to this one also you can get some marks okay and you know that no you know this x minus 1 is equal to 2 x0 is equal to 1 x1 is equal to 2 so what you have to do is you have to simply add them together okay so here you have 2 e to the power j omega plus 1 okay so x1 is 1 x0 is 1 and e0 is also 1 so you will have here only 1 okay now you have x1 that is again 2 e to the power minus j omega okay so you will have this kind of one okay so you will have this kind of one okay so what you have to do is now you can use euler formula to this one okay so it will be e to the power j theta like terms okay e to the power j theta that is cos theta plus sin theta okay so you know the euler formula you can write this as cos theta plus j sin theta and this can you can write as cos theta minus j sin theta okay so here theta is equal to omega okay so you will have cos omega uh, j sin omega cos omega j sin omega okay so this if you add them together this j value will be cancelled okay j value will be cancelled okay the sin omega sin omega cancel and 2 cos omega 2 cos omega you will get 4 cos omega and this one is there so plus one okay so there is x omega this is uh, capital omega okay this is capital omega normally we refer this is capital okay so this is the fourier transform 
okay now you can easily find the spectrum okay the magnitude spectrum that is nothing but you have to get the magnitude okay so here also you have to get the magnitude okay and phase also you can get so you can see that this is a real value this is a real value there is no any j terms okay so the the phase is zero because this is here zero so the phase is zero so if you get the x omega so that is zero because uh, this is a real value okay there is no j terms no j terms okay so this is a real value okay so the phase is zero and you have the magnitude okay so this is the magnitude okay so if you plot omega with respect to magnitude of x omega this will be the magnitude spectrum this will be the magnitude spectrum okay so if you so so th this also you can easily easily you can write you can draw this okay so how to draw this so you can first draw this one the uh, magnitude of four cos omega okay so if you if you know that cos omega okay omega with respect to cos omega the cos omega wave is like this okay the cos omega wave is like this. So this will be 1 and this will be minus 1. This is a cos omega 1. Okay. So this will be 5 by 2. This will be 5 and this will be 2 5. Okay. The same way here also. This will be 5 by 2. This will be 5 and this will be uh, 2 5 minus. These are minus. Okay. So this is the cos wave. Okay. So now you need to find 4 cos omega. 4 cos omega means this will be multiplied by 4. So this also will go to 4 and this one also will go to minus 4. Okay. So this is 4 cos omega. So if you get the magnitude, what happened? This minus value will come here like this. Okay. So this is 4 cos omega. Now you need to and there is a one also, okay, plus one, okay. So this is a DC signal, okay. This is a DC signal. You already know that this is a DC component, okay. So when the omega is changing, this value is not changing. It is one. This value is not changing. It is one. So you will have this one, one. Okay. Now what you have to do? You have to add this one and this one, this one and this one together. So what we'll have? What is this signal? What is happening here? What is that we call it? DC what? So in signal generator, you, you can do this. Okay. You can give this kind of thing. So, so what, what is we called? Can anyone tell? Can anyone tell what is happened? So if we have a AC signal, and if we add some DC value to this one, that phenomena what we call in signal generator. Also, we have this facility. What is we called it? It is we call DC shift. We give a DC shift or DC offset. Yeah, yeah, that is DC shift. Very good. Okay. Okay. So that is DC shifting. Okay. Yeah. So that is it. Okay. So here also you have a DC shift. Okay. So what happened? Your signal. Okay. So your final signal, the resultant signal. This signal will have a DC shift, one DC shift, okay? So this point will up by one and this soil will up by, up by one, okay? So it will come to five and here you have one, okay? So your variation is here between one and zero like this. Okay, and here we go like this. So this is the magnitude spectrum. This is the magnitude spectrum. Okay, so you can draw it. Okay.
this magnitude is spectral correct so i hope you can do this kind of one okay you should be able to do this kind of uh, question okay so uh, so once we give a dc shift you can understand okay so you have this signal okay and it is shifting one by here one in this direction no so this four this point four will move to five sorry this is not like this okay Okay. So our signal will be like this. Okay. So this four will be shift to five, and this zero will shift to one. Okay. And your signal is varying now between five and one. Here it is four and zero. Now we have you a DC shift, DC offset in plus direction it is a plus dc offset if you give a minus dc offset the, your signal will shift to here okay so this is a plus dc offset so your signal is move up okay so you will get this kind of one. correct this kind of signal you will get and here also you will get this kind of signal Okay, so your signal will be between one and your signal will be between one and five. Okay, so this will be five by two. This will be uh, this will be two five. No, sorry, five, and this will be three five by uh, two, and this will be two five. Okay. So this is your spectrum, okay? I will mark that this is zero, okay? And this will be five by two, and this point will be another five by two, that is five, okay? And this will be another five by two, that is three five by two. And here again, another five by two, so it will be two five. Here also you will have minus five, okay? minus minus five by two minus five here minus three five by two and here two five minus two five so this will be your spectrum okay okay that is now okay so this kind of question you should be able to okay so now uh, we will see another problem with this Fourier transform okay so now you know that if you have a continuous time signal okay like this okay so if you want to digitally process this signal you can't keep this signal as a continuous signal why the processing is hard why the processing is hard here any signal like a processing like a hard brain or a continuous signal like Processing, designing, analyzing. Or you know, hard, you know. Aye. Continuous signal will aye hard. The reason is that for a continuous signal, okay. For a continuous signal, you have infinite number of samples, infinite number of voltage value, okay. So for a continuous time signal, you have infinite. Actually, this is an analog signal, okay? This is not a continuous time signal, okay? So it is analog signal. Infinite number of uh, samples are there. What is called? Voltage levels are there, amplitude levels are there, okay? So if you want to... For example, if you want to store this in a RAM, okay, RAM ha has a limited uh, capacity, okay, you know, okay, I think you have learned about some microcontroller maybe, Arduino, okay, uh, 
Uh, so you know that uh, the RAM has this kind of memory bank, okay? So this one is a, one is a memory location, okay? So one memory location consists with several bits, okay? So this kind of finite memory location will be there, okay? So the limited memory is there. RAM doesn't have infinite memory, okay? It has a limited memory. You already know that limited memory. Okay. For example, our laptop RAM around 4 GB. Okay. So here you can store only 4 gigabyte here. Okay. You can't store anymore. Okay. So this is the maximum uh, storage capacity, storage space. Okay. So if you want to is to a analog signal, it is not possible because there are infinite number of voltage level. So infinite number of values are there. Infinite number of values we can't we can't store in a finite memory. No, it is very clear. Infinite number of voltage level there on a finite memory a cubit store on the band. So that what you have to do is you convert this signal into digital signal, okay? So you have only two levels, few levels, okay? So you have limited uh, voltage value, okay? Voltage value, then you can store it, okay? So that is why actually we like to, we like to convert our continuous time signal into discrete time signal. This process we call as sampling. I think you can remember this process we call as sampling. Once the sampling, okay, you can convert this sample into digital signal, okay. Uh, that is we called encoding actually, okay, encoding, okay. Um, so next week you have the Let me study leave from next day. Do you get the study leave from next day? Look at the study leave from another Ilanga Satina. Hello. Oh, sir, we see how exams are done. Okay, now I'm going to say that you're going to study leave, right? Oh, sir, study leave. I don't know. 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 The analog digital conversion. digital conversion. Analog signal leka, digital signal leka convert karana step one. This is the three step. Hmm? We convert digital signal, sorry, analog signal into digital signal. Okay. So this process is very important. Okay. So uh, I think you have heard that we have ADC, analog to digital converter. These are chips. Okay. So using no amps, using no amps and resistor, we can easily build this uh, ADC. Of amp we resistor take with the nana and the digital converter ka placing hada na pulwa. Eh ma hada puye wa hada wallo la tiyan ekani chip pi dihar tiyan ma bida. Mera chip pi dihar tiyan integrated circuit pi dihar tiyan. Har? Wala amitem hada na onna yathar ma na ta bido na hada na pulwa hari lesi construction. Har? It is very easy. To construct ADC, okay, but you should know this process actually. 
this is very important මේක මොකක් හරි subject එක ඔකට කරලා තියෙනවා බලන්න තරම් කරලා තියෙනවා නම් අපිට අතෑරලා දැම්ම නැහැ ඔකට analog to digital conversion කියන එක ඉගෙන ගෙන තියෙනවා hello නැත්තම් නැහැ කියන්නේ sure නැද්ද ඉගෙන ගෙන තියෙනවද නැද්ද කියලා बाकी इंपॉर्टे Uh, if we are dealing with very simple circuits, okay. For example, uh, if you want to connect a sensor to a Arduino or something to a microcontroller, you have to set, you have to connect it through analog to digital converter because sensor will have an analog signal. Arduino can't read the analog signal; it, it is a digital circuit, so you have to always you have to do this conversion always, okay. So ADC DAC is very important. ADC convert analog signal into digital signal, analog to digital convert, and DAC DAC digital to analog conversion. Okay. So DAC also very easily construct. Actually, using a resistor only, you can construct a DAC. Okay. Using a resistor ladder, you can construct the light uh, DAC. Okay. So actually, construction we are not learning here. Okay, in uh, in digital electronics you will learn this. Okay, you will learn this uh, ADC and VAC uh, construction. Okay, um, but this process I think you need to know here. Okay, so we miss it. Okay, okay, then I'm going to learn tomorrow. मुखदरा अरे अभी ना आप अभी पार्ट में देखो, ओके, सो वी विल मूव टू अवर लेसन नगेन, ओके, सो वी नीड टू लर्न दिस वन, ओके, दिस एनालॉग टू डिजिटल कंडीशन इस वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट एंड वी नीड टू लर्न इट, ओके, सो देयर आर थ्री प्रोसेस, प्लीज रिमेम्बर इट, सैम्पलिंग, कंटाइजिंग एंड एनकोडिंग, ओके, सो वी विल सी, सो सैम्पलिंग so using the example also okay let's see anyway okay okay now we will move to the lesson again okay so if you consider uh, if you consider so i told you that okay so if now we are dealing with digital electronics no? now we are dealing with digital electronics digital electronics okay so that is why we like to do digital processing digital signal processing okay so in digital electronics we are doing digital signal processing okay so digital signal processing has uh, discrete variable not the con continuous variable okay so now you you can see that if you convert a time domain sequence this is a discrete time variable into omega 
using Fourier transform. Okay. This omega is a continuous variable, not a discrete variable. So if you want to store this, uh, let's say that you want to store this Fourier transform signal on the memory. Okay, what happened? You can't do this. Okay, because here you have a continuous variable. Okay. So for that one, we also need to sample this omega. Okay. So I told you that if we if you have a uh, continuous time signal. If we sample this signal, we can convert this continuous time signal into discrete time signal. Continuous time signal into discrete time signal. But using sampling. Okay. So this is a time domain sampling. Okay. Continuous time signal into discrete time signal. We have learned this. Okay. We have learned this very well. I think. Uh, most of week we get for sampling naturally. sampling So it is very important. Uh, I think you have the idea, okay? So you can con convert continuous time signal into discrete time signal using sampling. Okay. Now what happened? This x omega also continuous time signal but it is in time domain okay Let, uh, so if you if you not like to use continuous time because this this is not time frequency anyway this is continuous frequency okay it is this omega is a continuous variable okay so you have to convert it to discrete version okay you have to convert it to discrete okay maybe uh maybe let's say that k or something okay so this omega is continuous time this k should be discrete time okay so what you have to do that is continuous time into discrete time again you have to do the sampling no here here also you have to do the sample okay because this omega is a continuous time, okay? But we like to have discrete time frequency, actually discrete variable of frequency, so that you can store it easily, or process it, sorry, not store, process it, okay? So for that one, okay, for that one, we use another technique that is we call DFT. DFT. Okay, this is discrete Fourier transform. This is discrete Fourier transform. Okay, so this is also very important. Okay, so uh, so let's see. Okay, so if you have a discrete time signal, you can convert the signal into frequency domain signal. This is we referred as discrete time Fourier transform, DTFT. Okay. Now you are going to convert this Xn into frequency domain, and also frequency domain also will, will have a frequency sample. Okay. So this ends are sample, no, but this omega is not sample, it is a continuous variable. Okay. But in DFT, you can directly convert discrete time sequence into frequency time sequence. Okay, so so it is not omega. Okay, omega is a continuous variable. You can convert it to another discrete variable. Okay, so this n is also discrete variable. This k is also this k variable. And this is time domain and this is frequency domain. Okay. So these are frequency domain sample. And this is time domain sample. Okay. So n is time domain sample. K is frequency domain sample. So what you have to know that, okay. We like to have discrete variable. 
So that is why we are using sampling. Using sampling, we can convert continuous time signal into discrete time. Okay. So that is very clear. Okay. Now, if you find the Fourier transform of frequency domain signal of a time domain discrete sequence Xn, okay, using DTFT, discrete time Fourier transform, that omega or the frequency will be continuous variable, not a discrete variable. Okay. Then again, we have to digitally process, again, we have to sample this frequency domain signal x omega, okay, to convert it to a discrete variable, okay. For that one, we use DFT, what is called discrete Fourier transform, so that you can convert discrete time, time sample, time domain signal into discrete time frequency domain signal, discrete time time domain signal into discrete time Fourier Learning. Okay, so maybe this time, if you don't like to use, you can say that this this frequency is discrete variable. Okay, okay, so that is DFT. Okay, so DFT is uh, defined like this. Okay, I will explain you what is this. Okay, uh, so if you have uh, discrete time sequence okay so you can convert it to xk that is discrete Fourier sequence okay discrete frequency sequence okay so this is also discrete variable and this will be also discrete variable this k is a discrete variable this k okay so this is we call DFT, not DIFT, okay? Previously, we have learned DIFT. Now we are focusing on DFT, discrete Fourier transform, okay? And you have the vice versa also, that is inverse discrete Fourier transform, okay? So uh, if you are given a time sequence and if you want to find the DFT, okay? DFT. Uh, so this is the definition. Okay. This is the definition. So this K, K is a discrete uh, variable. No? Okay. So it will have a finite number of values. Okay. This K will have finite number of values. Finite number of values. Okay, number of value. Let's say that this k have n values. This k have n values. Okay, this k have n values. Okay, so if this k have n value, we normally call it n point DFT. N point DFT. Okay, so the n point DFT can be defined by uh, n point DFT of uh, discrete signal can be defined by xk okay equal to here n from 0 to n minus 1 xn we normally refer to it as wn an okay is W when sorry this is capital N okay at capital N W N A N normally we refer uh, we normally uh, denote as e to the power minus j to five N N Okay, and this K N very simple. Okay, very simple. Yeah? So you have K N. Okay, so this is the endpoint DFT representation. Okay, this will be the endpoint DFT representation. Uh, so you should know this one also. 
Okay. We call this discrete Fourier transform. Okay, we call this discrete Fourier transform, and this is the identity. Okay. Uh, let's take. I'm uh, sure. So here, yeah. chapter six. This one, this case for your transform, okay? So this one, okay? L from 0 to XN, W and KN, okay? So this is the discrete uh, endpoint discrete for your transform, okay? DFT of X can be defined like this. Okay. So this is the definition. Okay. And the inverse discrete Fourier transform you can find like this. Okay. So from this n is from 0 to n minus 1. Okay. N minus 1. Okay. So this is the DFT uh, representation Xn. From DFT, you can convert it to XK, or XK can be converted to XN using IDFT. Okay. So these are the identities you should know. Okay. These are the identities you should know. Mostly we are focusing here. Okay. DFT. So discrete Fourier transform. Okay. So to understand this uh, this expression, we will try to do an example. Okay. Then you can maybe you can understand up to some level okay okay so i will give you i will take one example let's say that okay so this is dft example okay now i am getting dft example okay so let's say that hmm, Let's say that you will have. Okay, now I will get uh, one example from the book. Okay, so I think this is. Let's see, we have.
Okay, we will get this kind of one. Okay. It's in is equal to zero, one, two, three. Okay. So you have this kind of sequence. Okay. So you need to convert this sequence into XK using DFT. Okay. So not the DIFT. Okay. Not the DIFT. Okay. So you know already to find the DIFT. Okay. So you know already find the DIFT. What we need to find DFT. Okay. So let's say that. Let's say that uh, you need to find uh, four point DFT. Let's say that you have to find four point DFT, four point DFT of this signal. Okay. So how to do this? Okay. So let's see. Give me a uh, five minutes. Okay. <laughs> 